CataractCoach.com. Improve your divide and conquer technique. So let's give this young resident some advice to improve the technique of divide and conquer in this case. So ink marks being made, presumably to just kind of highlight where to make the incisions. So here's a main incision being made with the eye just with aqueous. And now probably some uh, anesthetic maybe going inside the eye. And now with a bigger cannula, some viscoelastic, probably HPMC, it's a 25 gauge cannula. And now a couple of pairs of TC's incisions. So we've obviously sped the video up because I want to show you the whole case. And our goal here is to give this young doctor some great advice as to how to improve the divide and conquer technique here. So good red reflex, I like that. Good draping, eyes in primary, iris is parallel to the floor. All our check marks are good. Now you can see I like the placement of that fake incision to avoid that one area of corneal haze and new vascularization. Adjusting the focus on the microscope to make sure that capsule is a nice sharp focus. Here comes the rexus. Uh, a little small on that rexus. That's a baby rexus. Don't do that. So this is a very small rexus. That's step one. is going to make life very challenging. This is, in my eyes, just guessing, probably a four millimeter, maybe four and a half if you're lucky, in diameter for that caps rexus size. So you want to make a bigger rexus than that. So that's going to make life very challenging because think about it. That's, if that rex is four and a half millimeters and that's being generous, the nucleus is at least nine millimeters in diameter and you're gonna bring out these four quadrants that's gonna be quite large, it's gonna be a very tight fit. So making that baby rex is here makes life a lot more challenging. So some hydrodissection being done. I would avoid digging the cannula so deep into the nucleus. I usually don't wanna to see too much of a groove there created by that. I like the uh, delineation Hydro delineation to give you an endonucleus, that's going to make life a lot easier. Because now you only have to remove the endonuclear quadrants through that small rexus. So that's good. A little groove going down here in the middle. I agree. Let's get the bubbles out of there. Don't worry about that. They can be, they can be easily aspirated. Be very careful now with the smaller rexus. You want to avoid hitting the rexus edge. So nice groove here. Again, try to keep the eye in primary as you're doing this. See how the eye's wandering? You want to keep the eye in primary the entire time. That's a reasonable groove. You may want to make it a little bit longer. And so I think the depth is getting there. That looks pretty reasonable. And now here we go. Let's see the split. Let's see if the nucleus can be cracked in two halves. Again, center up the microscope, my friend. Center up the scope here. And looks like uh, it was cracked. And now, again, what problem are we running into here? Your eye is not centered. So you got to center it up. Look how we're on the side of the screen now. And you also lose the good red reflex there. And you see the big white lines, the reflections there? That's just too much tearing or of aqueous pooling on the ocular surface. You're going to drown in your tear film here. And so that's going to make life difficult too. So you want to get the draping done right so you're not going to pool so much liquid here. Use um, some sort of wick to get that moisture away if you need to. And so again, really hard view. So if you're struggling as a viewer now to watch this, gosh, the surgeon's really struggling. It just makes your life more complicated. So again, see the eye keeps going out of primary. There's no reason for that. The eye should stay centered the whole time. So that's probably my most important thing here. My most important advice is number one, make a bigger rexus. Number two, you really, really have to focus on keeping the eye in primary the entire surgery. The eye should not be drifting off your screen. So now there you can see there's that small rexus. And let's see what's going to happen here. I'd clear off that ocular surface too. And again, other, the, another bit of advice is again, fix the draping. Those big white reflections that you see there to the right side of the screen, that's because there's a huge pooling of fluid on top of the cornea, on top of the ocular surface, and it just makes your view terrible. So again, you're suffering for no reason. This is easily remedied. I would, if I was your attending, if I was your professor, I'd stop and say, listen, let's fix the draping first. Get the eye centered up, put the eye back in primary. Now, plenty of viscoelastic can be used here, times where you normally wouldn't want to use it, but that's okay. It looks like it's HPMC, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose, which is very inexpensive and very easy to obtain, especially outside the U.S. In the U.S., you may actually pay about $50 for a tube of one, millimeter, one milliliter of HPMC. In other countries, it can be much cheaper than that by more than a factor of 10. And so there's that small rexus, enlarging the incision here. And let's see, placing, placement of the lens coming up. And so 
This lens is going to go in the capsule bag, of course, and you will be able to finally judge what's our exact Rexa size here. So here comes the lens, and it's going in. Remember, 7L rule. Good catch, buddy. Good catch. 7L rule. So now the lens is in the correct orientation. Started off small uh, in the wrong orientation. Now you can see the Rexa is very small. No question. Let's assume it's a six millimeter optic on this lens. If that's the case, that is a four millimeter rexus. So no need to make a baby rexus. You will just suffer needlessly. And so cleaning out the remaining viscoelastic from the eye. I think, dear resident, you've got very good hands. I think you can do very well. I'm encouraged by your progress, but just keep in mind the advice here. A bigger rexus, five millimeter diameter. Gosh, it's not this much hydration. Stop with the hydration already. It's just a paracentesis. And then keep the eye in primary the entire case and fix the pooling of fluid on the ocular surface. And then at the end here, no more corneal hydration. That's way too much. All right. Thanks for watching.